it's a it's a mathematical field. In fact, we have a, ma a, a major here, an OR major. So if you want to become a math major, you can go into OR. Uh, that's a specialty, or you could just be a pure math or an applied mathematician. Uh, anyway, OR is one of the one of the billets in the Navy. It's a very important um, uh, part of the Navy, and it covers such problems as. I've got two airplanes, soldiers lost, a, a sailor's lost at sea. What's the fastest strategy for two airplanes to search the ocean to find the soldier and bring him to safety? That's one type of problem that's uh, very commonly studied in operations research. Another kind of problem, you've got a, a whole bunch of sailors on a battleship and they all have ice cream, but some of them like chocolate and some of them like vanilla. What's the fastest way to determine who likes what and then you know, supply everyone with the correct amount of ice cream? So that you don't have melting ice cream and you're not, you know, you have only a certain amount of storage space and so on. So those completely different kinds of problems are both covered in this uh, field of operations research. He co-founded that. The National, uh, as I said, the National Society for Operations Research is, the, is the, one of the main societies and its, its main award is the Lancaster Award. So if you're the top operations research person of the year, you get the Lancaster Award. That's, that's how big this guy is. So he's a very interesting fellow, and uh, he developed uh, some differential equations, Lancaster's equations. And they model uh, the battle between two forces, two forces, I call them X men and Y men. Just to prove that we're not uh, gender specific here, why men, the, the X men, as you know, have uh, several women in there, so I'm not being prejudiced here. In fact, upstairs there are some computers uh, named Mystique and Storm uh, named after the X men. So uh, you all have to know the X men, but now we're inventing these new uh, bad guys called Y men. Fight, fought the battle. Um, is uh, conventional in the fire. Uh, that means, as in a dog fight, you've got one plane chasing another plane <coughs> shooting and trying to shoot it down, and that plane will either go down or he'll go down because another plane is shooting him. And if he kills that one plane, he then starts aiming at another plane. That's what aim fire battle means. Another one is like Cowboys and Indians. Got, you know, Cowboy just trying to target one person. That's what the fire is. So we're not talking about guerrilla warfare or urban warfare. Um, well, we're not talking about guerrilla warfare where there's uh, random bombings and this kind of thing. Um, that is uh, a model by. Let's do equations. X prime equals minus a y. Number of x men fighting is x sub zero, let's say. Y prime is minus b x. Initial number of y men fighting, let's say, is y zero. Professor, uh -huh. you might want to try to tuck that string behind the blackboard because it looks like it on the camera, it looks like a line oh, okay. drawn on the blackboard. There. <laughs> That's better. Now, um, the constants, the uh, coefficients, A, B, are called fighting effectiveness coefficients. coefficients and we assume they are constants. A common um, um, well I don't want to uh, call it a 
assumption, what's called a hypothesis. You don't need this uh, statement, I'm just making this statement to help you understand uh, these fighting effectiveness coefficients uh, intuitively a little bit better. Common hypothesis in null theory strategy is to assume that the fighting effectiveness proportional to a power of uh, p minus x0 over x0, where t is the total number of troops system of differential equations is, that's it right there, the next thing is the square law, and that's something that you can derive from this differential equation. This is a well-known law in military strategy to, to derive this. You use separation of variables. This uh, 
expression actually has a name called fighting strength. The fighting strength of the Y men. I mean, you look like you were thinking for a second, so 
I've um, got to just to check. Let's so four y zero squared minus x zero squared is a constant. Okay. Yeah, I think I did that right. Right, because this is this is nine times ten, and this is fifteen times ten. Oh, okay. And right. fifteen squared is oh, fifteen times ten. Gotcha. So. Uh, 324 minus 225, 99, I think, uh, the magic of chalk, I think we have 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Now remember y shorthand lazy notation for y of t. And x is shorthand lazy notation for x of t. Can y ever be zero? Y of t, can that ever be zero? Can the y, can the y man lose? If, if this is ever zero, there would be negative x squared. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense. So, and there's one loser and one winner. So y man. That Lancaster square law. Is it, if the uh, answer is negative, it should the x can break to the x negative. Right. Yeah, so, and in fact, we can actually say uh, when x, in fact, when x of t, when x is x of t is zero, then um, 4 y squared. Which is I feel here at least uh, forty nine point seven five approximately Y e is forty nine point seven five. Thank you. Okay, so let's keep that uh, in fact let's keep that up here too. work this out by a separate technique and see if we get the same number. So that tells us, without solving the equation in the, the way that we're supposed to, without solving the system in the way we're supposed to, in parametric form, we know who wins and what the losses are. But we don't know when, and uh, that's an important matter here, so let's solve this. And to solve this, let's use Laplace transforms as opposed to uh, plug and chug where you're differentiating one equation and plugging it into another equation. And eliminating a variable that way and then solving using uh, um, the method of characteristic polynomials. Let's take Laplace transforms. First, we have to take Laplace transforms in the first equation. Laplace <coughs> of x prime. Minus the initial condition, which is x0. And then uh, the loss of the other side is minus 4. The loss of lowercase y is by notation uppercase y. Second equation. Okay. Second equation. Loss of y prime. This initial value of y, which is 90, and the loss of minus x, minus little x is minus capital X. Now we want to solve, we want to eliminate one of the variables. Let's eliminate x of s solve therefore for y of s. And so to eliminate x of s, let's solve for x of s, let's say in this equation, plug it into the other equation. So we get 
S 90 minus S Y of S. That's uh, this quantity here. Minus 150 equals minus 4 Y of S. These are in your tables, actually. Uh, this is directly in the tables, so that's not an issue. The problem is uh, this one here is not quite in the tables. If you have a four down here, you have to have a two up here. So I'll just uh, get through the magic of chalk. Put a two here, divide by two here. Right? And then uh, we use the tables. This first one, minus 75, right here is minus 75. That is a uh, cinch, cinch, U. T. And the second one, 90. function, not to be confused with the sine function, is either the 2t minus either minus 2t over 2. And cosh is very similar. <coughs> Just replace the minus by plus either the 2t plus either the minus 2t. 2. Since it's easier to deal with exponentials than it is to deal with coshes and cinches, so let's just translate that function into exponentials. We've got uh, minus 75 over 2 and e to the 2t minus e to the minus 2t. We just put that over 2 up front. And then for the cosh, we've got 45 e to the 2t plus e to the minus 2t. Over 2 up front, so that 90 becomes a 45. And now we've got something times e to the 2t and something times e to the minus 2t. You just need to figure out what that is. e to the 2t has that term and that term. 45 minus um, 37.5. Uh, Plus 37.5, um, 82.5. 82. Uh, collecting coefficients. So we 
collecting the coefficients of e to the 2t here and the coefficients of e to the minus 2t here. Notice that this coefficient is positive. This function is always positive, right? The exponential function looks like that, right? It's never below the axis. That coefficient is positive, and this exponential function also is positive. It looks like this. So this whole thing is never zero. It's always above the axis. So the y min cannot lose. And in fact, the y min will win. So just because it never reaches zero means the y min cannot lose. Right. Okay. They can never they can never lose. And now for the x min. and then plug it into here because your calculator will have some round off error and you won't get 
150. But they lose everything. So just write 150 down. It's the easiest way to do it. And this would be 90 minus y of t0. Right? The number of survivors is y of t0. And so we have to compute. We plug this into y of t. And subtract 90. That's 90 minus 49.749, which you said earlier. You can confirm that uh, what you wrote before was correct. And so about uh, 40, uh, uh, one survived. Yeah, how you interpret the point seven? If you get something like this. Where did you get 90 minus 49? You plug this number into this function. So if you plug this number into this function, that's what you'll get. Uh, 0.599. It's actually uh, 47. Plug that number into here and here, you'll actually get this, which actually matches what we got when we solved this equation. So I think that's your square ball. Let me take, take the 0.59947 plug it into the x equation or the y equation. The, the y equation. And you, you will get. <coughs> Where's this. the 90 coming from? Uh, that's the initial number. Okay. So y of t represents the number of fighters at 9t. Right? So when you take the difference, it's. Uh, that's the number of losses. And that's what we're looking for, is the number of losses. Do you have a question? Uh, you take a T, plug, plug it in there, and that becomes Y of T, bro? I'm sorry. <laughs> losses. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah, so that, when you plug this in to here, you do get 49.749. And that's what you got here as well. Okay, uh, let's try, um, well, for the heck of it, we have 10 minutes. Let's just try the brute force uh, plug and plug. We can get the same answer.
characteristic polynomial remember we get that by replacing derivatives by powers of d so there would be two derivatives here and there's just one derivative here I'm sorry there's no derivatives here so it would be d to the zero this is a characteristic polynomial for this differential equation and then we find the roots this polynomial, and they're plus or minus uh, plus two and minus two, right? And so the solution is c1 e to the 2t, c2 e to the minus 2t. You know, uh, one of the initial conditions is y of 0 equals 90, we need y prime of 0. Okay, y prime of 0, we use the second equation. y prime of 0 is minus x of 0. Just take the second differential equation, plug 0 in. And x of 0 is 150, so this is minus We've got y of t, two initial conditions we can solve for c1 and c2. For c1, we plug 0 in. 90 <coughs> is equal to y of 0, which is equal to c1 e to the 0. Two, e to the zero, which is four. Minus 150 is y prime of zero. You take the derivative of this and plug zero in. You can take the derivative in your head. You just drop the two and the minus two down. You get two c1 minus two c2. Now we have to solve these equations. Let's divide by two first. Where did the 2c1 minus the 2c2 uh, You just differentiate in your head. So the okay. 2 drops down here and the minus 2 drops down there. And, they both are okay. and now, instead of solving these two, let's solve c1 plus c2 equals 90. And then let's take this equation and divide by 2. So the c1 minus c2 is minus 5. You want to solve this for c1 and c2. This one you can pretty much do in your head also. Just add these two equations. And you get uh, 2c1 is uh, 15. Therefore, c1 is 7.5. Okay, agreed. You add these two, these cancel, and you just get two of these guys. Now if C1, if we know C1, we can solve for C2 using this first equation. C2 is 90 minus C1, which is uh, 82.5, and therefore y of t is 7.5,